Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday Night Live. George Watkins here, and I'm proud to have you with us tonight. Thank you for joining me. We're going to talk about the good things of the Lord and celebrate victories and be reminded of who we are and who Christ is, is in us and what he's done for us. Other than that, just another Sunday night in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, if you are new to uh, with us and have not been with us before, welcome. Stay around. There's something good coming down the channel. Amen. We are experiencing ongoing manifestations, revelations, insight, and encouragement from the Holy Spirit. How do I know that? Because the scriptures tell us that he will be faithful to give us, minister, guide, guard, lead. That's the promise we have. So when <clears throat> tests come, trials come, problems, storms, all those things that describe uphill you know, problems, the Holy Spirit's faithful to bring us through. Like one guy said years ago, he said, I had it so tough that I had to walk uphill both ways to school. Now you figure that out. A little exaggeration, but it's kind of the attitude when we begin to see life as an uphill battle. But I tell you what, if you understand the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and understand the promise that God gave us, when he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. Now, let's take a picture of that for a moment. <clears throat> Here's the 12 and dozens more, in some cases, hundreds more around Jesus. They didn't travel, just the 12. They had their entourage and they had the women that to help them <laughs> stay alive. I don't see those men out there cooking and you know, doing all the things that need needed for a 13-man crew to move through the territory. Now, when he said this, there's going to be another comforter. They knew instantly what it was going to be because they had been with Jesus and they had comfort. They knew he could feed them. They knew if they were sick, he would heal them. Look at Peter, Peter's mother-in-law raised up. And they knew that if they were in danger, he would tell them. It's an amazing thing when he said, another comforter's coming that's going to be with you forever. That's the Holy Spirit. So when you and I catch a hold of that, there's something happens in our inner man, <clears throat> that uh, inner person, because we are neuter gentler in the Holy Ghost, neither male nor female, bond nor free. We are all one in Christ. Amen. So the Holy Spirit then fortifies and encourages and directs and guides, guards and leads because he is the essence, the very spirit of God himself. All right. Well, the word today is a short self-life. God dropped that on my spirit today. We're going to talk about it just a little bit. And in the process, see if we can catch a couple of uh, key thoughts. When I read a book or hear a sermon, if I can get a nugget, if I can get just a, a nugget, as they say. I remember my father was an interesting fellow. <laughs> as you know, if you followed me, he was a preacher from the teenage years until he was 92. And he did a lot of different things along the journey to keep alive, <clears throat> building houses and selling vacuums and cars and working in the woods <laughs> and building churches and preaching in the pulpit. But I remember we were in Sacramento in uh, the early 60s, started a church there, and he got the gold fever. Now, if you remember, if you remember your history, Sacramento's where they discovered gold, right at Fort Sutter. And we had a church just about two blocks away from the old fort. Well, 
he wasn't going to be left out. So he began to put his equipment together and he built himself a slush box. Now, a slush box is what they put gravel in and then they run water. It's like a giant washboard. Some of you older people remember that. <laughs> the younger people just know where the button is, you know, to push. So he had this great idea and we threw that in the back of the old Ford and headed toward uh, the hills up above Sacramento. Guess who got to carry that stinking <laughs> heavy slush box? It was me. He was looking for nuggets. Oh, we got some flakes. <clears throat> Not in the church. We, had, we didn't want those in the church. We got some gold flakes and it encouraged him. So what did he do to save time? He he put a lot of that river dirt in a couple of five gallon buckets and brought it home. Well, he's sitting in the kitchen one night and he was gold panning, you know, they, <clears throat> they had a, a pan, the old gold miners had a gold pan or a, and uh, they put water in there and wiggle it and see if they could find some gold. You see gold's heavy and it, the sand floats away. So, He's sitting there. My mother comes by and said, what are you doing, Joe? Well, I'm looking for gold. <laughs> she went in the bedroom and got an old, <clears throat> one of her gold teeth she used to have in her mouth and dropped it in that bucket. Oh, he was excited when he found that. He had found the nugget. <laughs> Didn't last long, but it was sure funny. And I'm still, still telling the story, so it's still funny. A nugget, one nugget in a book, one nugget in a sermon, <clears throat> one nugget as you open the, the book, something that you read that jumps out at you. It's worth the journey when, you, when it happens. So you and I then, the scriptures, uh, the scripture gives, uh, the spirit of God gave me that. Uh, <laughs> I interrupt my own self. Let's start it. Let's, let's catch it here. <clears throat> the tagline today is <clears throat> that we, you and I, need a short self-life, a short self-life. I heard that, that song drop in my spirit from my childhood and church. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. Now, I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's, it's singing in my head. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in thee. <clears throat> Let my friends see only you. Let me die to myself and they, they, they'll see you. Okay. Paul, the Apostle Paul, gives us a, a, <clears throat> a line in his writings. And he says, um, <clears throat> he says that um, it's important that you learn how you 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 as a Christian, you as a believer, learns how to allow the Holy Spirit to expand itself until what they see. Now I'm paraphrasing. What they see is not you, but they see the Holy Spirit shining, working through you. Now, what what would be one of the illustrations? The fruits of the Spirit. That would be you and I expressing love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you're young, you express the old things, the works of the flesh, selfishness, je jealousy, anger, wrath, malice. Those things happen. And Paul called it carnality. He says, you guys are still carnal, so, you know, <laughs> stop it. So the Holy Spirit then, as we lose ourself and find it, Lord, in thee, or has, <clears throat> as we have a short self-life, then the new life comes out. All right, Paul uh, talks about that as a child. He says, he says when, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. And I uh, acted like the child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, childish things are 
fighting with each other and jealousy and I want my toy and give me that toy because I want your toy. <laughs> you know, I've got grandkids and <clears throat> most of them are like three, three or four years old. And they're, they're children. We don't expect them to be mature yet. Now, at 40, if they're still doing that as children, you know, as our children, I'm going to think we missed it somewhere. Now, <clears throat> Paul says, that's the natural progress and process of a Christian life is like a child that starts out immature, starts out with the works of the flesh that are not totally, you know, gone to develop into the man of, woman of God. No, uh, John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. So here's the key. Here's the key. There's a, uh, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says that we are to um, search out the good things, handle the precious and not the vile. Handle the precious and not the vile. Okay? There's an old story. It's a, it's a humorous story, <laughs> I think, as <laughs> if you laugh. <clears throat> There's a, a cashier, a male cashier, counting money at the bank teller's window. And he's doing it very fast. And, um, and the bank president came by and says, oh, my goodness, where did you learn to count money that fast? And he says, Yale. He says, oh, were you, did you go to Yale? <laughs> well, he was, he had an accent. And actually he was saying jail. Well, that's my joke for the day. <laughs> but they do say that if you're going to know what counterfeit is, you've got to handle a lot of real money. If you handle real money a lot and, and all the time, then when that counterfeit bill gets in your fingers, you'll feel it. So the, the scriptures tell us in the Old Testament that we are to handle the precious and not the vile. But um, some of our teaching, maybe more than we'd like to think, they're always telling us to get rid of anger and stop being mean and don't cuss and don't smoke and don't do those bad things and stay away from this thing and that thing. And if you'll handle and get rid of all the evil, then you'll be a good person. No. John said, he must increase and I must decrease. I'll tell you what, if you'll just feed, allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit to feed into you the Word of God, the Spirit of God, prayer, fellowship, you know, good loving people around you, a good atmosphere you're in regularly with others, have some mentors in your life that can speak truth into you and correct you when you need it as a child, you know, a, a spiritual child. You will have an increase of Christ in you, the hope of glory, and the things that you have been trying to get rid of will fall away, and you won't remember where they went. If you spend the next years of your life trying to be a better person, I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to hate again. And please never say, I'm not going to be like my father. If you do that, you're guaranteed to be like him. <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm talking about your natural father that may have been not kind to you. Okay. So I must decrease, but in order to do that, he increases and pushes me out. Now, if you've been with me a while, you've heard this story three or four times. The old boy rushes into the lunch counter and asks, and ask, demands a glass of buttermilk. <clears throat> and the fellow puts one down for him and he downs it running down his cheek onto his chest. Give me another. And oh, it's okay. He downs it and again, running down his chest. The third one comes. I got to have another one. And the fellow behind the counter says, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? He says, well, you know, I have this desire to drink alcohol. And I figure 
If I'm full of buttermilk, there won't be any room for alcohol. Ding, ding. <laughs> That's a biblical principle. If you're filled with the goodness of God and the love of God that comes from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, and you're filled with the promises and you've got some good fellowship that just keep you warm in the, in the bosom of God, there's not going to be any room for you to develop your old nature again. Amen. Well, Paul said he had to crucify himself. So every once in a while, you need to put that old man down. Tell him to get back in the can. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, a short self-life. Your self-life needs to be short because your spiritual life will never develop as long as you're in the way. You want, you want God to have his way? Get out of the way. How do you do it? One step at a time. One step at a time. I use the illustration in the notes below about the you know, the classical Western theme where the sheriff comes to the bad guy and says, this town isn't big enough for both of us. Get out of town by noon. Well, Holy Spirit has come to you and you receive Christ and the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, buster, it's either you or me <laughs> and I'm not leaving. So you're going to have to die to yourself. Jesus said, Unless a man or a person, this is in Matthew 16, 24, denies himself and follows me. He was not going to have any benefit in this thing. You're not going to get some freebies here. There's no giveaways in this thing. You got to pay for it by submitting to the giver. Amen. Submitting to the giver is... Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, having faith in the word, loving the, the things of God, repenting when you miss it. Don't be just, and, when you, and we do, we miss it, but that doesn't mean we quit. We get back up, get back on the horse, as they say, and keep going. Amen. I tell you, it's a wonderful thing when you catch a hold of a couple of, of, the, of the keys for progress. Once you get a couple of them, feels like you're going forward, feels like you're, you're doing something right. It's so encouraging. It's so exhilarating that you keep going. Then you begin to feel the engine of your spirit kick in. And then you know that you've got some gifts that are there you didn't know about before. Why didn't you know that? Because you were so covered over with self-indulgence and self-will and personality, you know, power until the Holy Spirit says, oh, when you stop kicking and fussing, I'll step in and do the work God's promised you. Amen. Oh, well, I love you all. This is Sunday night. That was my Sunday night blast. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for stopping by. We'll be here on Monday again tomorrow morning, early, bright and early. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, and we're working on our YouTube, so it'll be a little more prominent. It's still there. And we're on Rumble and um, Instagram. You can find us there. Sign up and join us on Facebook. All those uh, different things that are going out are touching different people in different areas. We've got a number of people that are tuned in around the world. Different nations have tuned in. So... I'm encouraged, and I pass that on to you. Until tomorrow morning, bright and early, we will see you. And oh, by the way, thank you for your prayers and your financial support. What those that have sent in us a in a financial gift, we thank you and bless you. And a great, it's a great encouragement. If you have a nudge to do that from the Holy Ghost, the address is below in the notes. Amen. Until tomorrow morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you and let the Lord increase in your life. God bless.